So once you've decided how many shards your new index needs, you need to actually create that index and specify the shard count you want. Let's talk about how to actually do that. And afterwards, we'll talk about how you can use new indexes or indices, I suppose is the correct word, as a scaling strategy of its own. So here's the syntax on how to actually specify the number of primary and replicas that you want on your new index. And remember, the number of replicas is applied to each primary shard. So by saying number of shards 10 and number of replicas 1, that means you're going to end up with 10 primary shards and 10 replica shards, so one replica for each primary, OK? So that can be a little bit confusing at first. Now, in the past, we've sort of implicitly created new indices as we've created new data. And we've just been using the default settings for the number of shards because we didn't care. You know, we didn't have a lot of traffic in our little course here. We only had one machine, so it wasn't really worth thinking about too much. But in the real world, you want to think about this a lot. So make sure that any new index is formally created before you start inserting data into it with the number of shards that you think you're going to need for the foreseeable future. Now, to make this easier, there's also something you can look up called index templates, and that's a way to automatically apply mappings and analyzers and aliases and settings like this to any new index that gets created. So if you want to look at that up, it can, it can save you some time as well. So let's actually get some hands-on practice in doing this because it is an important thing to remember and have sort of muscle memory on. So let's go off and actually create a new index with a specific number of shards. So let's explore how to actually investigate the settings of an index in terms of its number of shards and how to create a new index with a given number of shards. Fortunately, we now have Kibana in our tool chest, so we don't have to deal with typing in JSON requests by hand in a console. We can just go to DevTools here after going to 127.0.0.1 colon 5601 to access Kibana on your running cluster. And let's uh, delete all this stuff here that we were playing with before. And instead, let's do something like this. Get Shakespeare slash underscore settings. OK, and we'll hit play. And this gives you back the number of shards and replicas on the Shakespeare index that we created way back at the beginning of this course. And you can see that the default settings that it went with are five primary shards and one replica. So we have five primaries and five replicas running all on our one little virtual machine here, which is probably more than it really should necessarily have. I doubt we really have enough memory on our little virtual machine to handle five primary shards all being equal. But those are the default settings. So that's how you can actually check and see what your current index is using for the number of primary shards and replicas. And remember, there's the number of replicas is the number of shards times that number to get the actual number of replica shards. So let's say that I wanted to create a new index with uh, three primaries and one replica of each primary. The syntax for that would just be, and it's very simple. I just want you to do this to kind of like get your fingers to remember it. <laughs> so we can just say put slash test index. OK, so we're going to create a new index called test index that contains the following structure. It will have settings as follows, number of shards. And you can see that it automatically fills this in. So I can just like arrow down there and like auto complete it. It even put in the default setting for me. But let's change that to three. And we will also set number of replicas. And again, it makes it really easy to do this. Just hit tab to actually fill that in. and. We'll stick with the uh, default of one replica for each primary shard. So you can see Kibana makes life a whole lot easier doing this sort of a thing. Let's go ahead and hit play. And looks like it came back fine. If we want to double check, we can actually do a get request to make sure that that took. You can say get slash test index slash underscore settings. And sure enough, we have three primaries with one replica. Cool. So that's all there is to it. And actually specifying the number of shards you want on a new index. Now, adding new shards to an existing index is not your only option for adding capacity to your application. Another thing you can do is actually create entirely new indices for your application and spread your search requests across those indices. So that way you can just add more capacity and new indices and leave your old indices untouched. That's a lot easier than trying to re-index an existing one to add more shards to it. So the idea here is to have multiple indices that encompass the data in your application and use index aliases to manage which indices you actually care about at runtime. Now, we saw this in action already back when we were playing with Logstash. As you recall, Logstash, by default, created a separate index for every day's worth of log data. So we would have a Logstash-1205-01 you know, index and a Logstash-1205-02 index, one for each day that it had for input data. And the idea there is that you could restrict your searches perhaps to the most current day or the current three months or whatever it might be just by rotating through the indices for the specific dates that you're interested in. 
Now you can actually manage that using index aliases. So if you do have a setup like that where you have log data split up into separate indices for each individual day, you could maintain an alias, for example, called logs underscore current or whatever you want to call it, that points to the most current day or the most current month worth of indices that you have available. Or you could have another one that's called last three months that points to all the indices that encompass log data from the past three months. So as new indices get created for new days of data that come in, you would update those aliases to point to different specific indexes, indices, <laughs> that's always going to mess me up, that point to the specific dates that you want. Okay, so let's look at what that actually looks like syntactically. Let's imagine, if you will, that we have a new month of log data, and we're actually organizing our indices as to contain one month of log information. So let's say that uh, log information for the month of June 2017 comes in, and that's been added. Now, if we want to have a logs underscore current alias that points to the most current, the most recent month of data, we would do something like this, where we could say add an alias for logs underscore current to add logs 2017.06 to that alias. And an alias can contain more than one index. It just searches them all together. And at the same time, we would remove from logs underscore current the previous month, which was 2017.05. So what we're doing here is maintaining the logs current alias by adding the June data to it and removing the May data from it, thereby just making sure that logs current is po pointing to the most recent month. Now we could have a logs last three months alias as well. So in that case, we might want to add June's data into that logs last three months alias and remove March's data from it because that's going to be four months old at that point. So you can see that an alias can encompass more than one index, but when you search that alias, it will actually go across all of those indices at once automatically. So this is a nice little way of adding capacity and adding more data to your Elasticsearch application by having separate indices that just get managed in this manner. So if you do have time-based requests where typically you're only going to be querying a certain period of time relative to now, this can be a very, very good strategy. And optionally, as new data falls off those aliases, you could delete them just to free up more space in your cluster and maintain your uh, server capacity needs to something you know manageable and constant, or relatively constant at least. Maybe you want to back that up to a snapshot first, and we'll talk about that in a few lectures from now. But this is the basic idea of alias rotation and how you can use multiple indices to actually add capacity and add new data without having to re-index things all the time. Very powerful idea.